Hi, my name is Angel Lacal. I come from CTAG in Spain, and my speech will deal about use cases and success stories of a data analytics system in an automotive paint shop. First presentation, uh, CTAG is the Automotive Technology Center of Galicia. We are in this uh, corner of the world, as you can see. We are a private research and technology organization in uh, Spain with more than 700 people nowadays. Uh, yeah, we are a non-profit organization and we develop R&D uh, innovations and services activities. We are very focused in automotive, but not, not only. And we have many different fields. I come from the processes and industry for the zero uh, uh, department. In this work, uh, people from the group PSA of the Pico factory has also participated. PSA, as you know, a worldwide known automotive OEM with more than three and a half million vehicles sold globally uh, last year, is the second construction in Europe with more than 200,000 people on the staff. And specifically the Pico factory, which is in Northwest Spain, very close to CTAG. Um, they are manufacturing almost half a million vehicles every year and with a huge cadence, even in these hard times. So as uh, a context of automotive industry, uh, it's a very demanding uh, sector. Uh, and every year uh, it is demanded more and more customization. So the tendency is that every vehicle is different. Every manufacturer uh, vehicle is potentially different to any other because the customers are demanding a high level of uh, adaptation and personalization. So, um, well, this is a tendency in all the market. On the other hand, it's a very optimized industry, but it's always demanding more quality and more efficiency and more productivity. There is a huge competitiveness uh, in uh, between all the manufacturers. So uh, obviously Industry 4.0 comes as a solution uh, to provide more customization and more efficiency in the production. Uh, seen as the combination of ICT, of course, and manufacturing. And this, um, this means that data analytics can be a solution uh, to improve and to uh, provide this customization. So data analytics uh, is a tool to support decision taking in the factory, uh, allow people to take better decisions with better, better quality, uh, data with better quality, more recent data and aggregated data. Okay? So the idea, uh, obviously, of a data analytics system is having an automatic parallel system which is collecting data from the very large uh, variety of data sources that there is in a factory and trying to translate this data, this raw data, into information. And there are some typical uh, activities that come from a data analytics system. One is the optimization of parameters of a process. Another one could be solving deviation of, of a process or control the process. Sometimes these things happen in the factory. And one very important quality prediction and predictive maintenance, uh, understanding why is happening uh, a loss of quality or why uh, a machine is stopping or is, is failing. So in this work, in this paper, uh, we present the process of the description, the integration and the usage of a data analytics solution in a real automotive um, factory in the case of the paint shop, uh, we, one of the areas of the manufacturing process. We have commented already, but why a data analytics solution, what it provides? Well, um, the first one would be uh, decrease the cost of the non-quality. So um, when, when some defect uh, um, happens in the production, uh, what it means is that somebody has to rework on this part. So this is time, of course. If we decrease the non-quality, we are uh, removing this reworking time, which is not efficient. Um, we, we seek quality under control. This means that we want to uh, manufacture in the best way possible with no quality loss. And this means optimizing parameters of the production or at least being adapted to changes in the, in the manufacturing by optimizing these parameters. One very important uh, um, uh, action would be the crisis, crisis solving. So crises happen uh, every day. Um, if we are able to um, become um, uh, adaptable to this crisis uh, by a real-time monitoring, uh, we can be uh, we can solve this crisis uh, quicker. Okay, and then of course energy efficiency. There is a lot of money uh, going on, uh, changing one degree above uh, in uh, 
uh, in, a, in, a, in an oven in a paint shop uh, which have huge uh, size and huge temperatures. It's a lot of money. So if we are able to identify any unwanted situations in which uh, well, some machine is uh, switched on when it shouldn't or any situation like that is very important. And of course, maximizing production. If we're able with the same machines, with the same procedure to um, uh, produce more, uh, that's fantastic. And uh, this can, can come from identifying non-value processes that maybe we can use for producing more. So um, there is a key aspect that goes underneath of these uh, five good reasons to implement a data analytics solution, which is the economical part, okay? Um, any of these um, good reasons to implement a data analytics solution have, uh, uh, each, of, each of them has some economical background. We have to explain the hierarchy why uh, these uh, reasons are good, but in terms of money, in terms of return of the investment. So factories are uh, complex environments, um, and right now we, we uh, face different circumstances that affect uh, the moment in which we decide to implement a data analytics solution. One is that there are two worlds, uh, the worlds in the factory that uh, are living together, uh, but separated at the same time, which are OT and IT. OT is the uh, PLC layer, the, the automatisms layer, the layer of the information systems that are close to the machines, uh, that are designed to control all the machines, all the processes from a, a low level perspective. And meanwhile, IT layers, information technology, are high level information systems, software, the ERP, etc. So they have different purposes, they, are, they have different teams, different people, and they are usually confined. Uh, they, they, they interact, but not too much. And uh, if we need data from both layers, and in, if we need uh, both layers to interact more, we will face some uh, uh, challenges, of course. Then in a big company, uh, as happens in PSA, um, they have many information systems, uh, a lot. Uh, they are interrelated, sometimes they are overlapped, um, sometimes these uh, information systems are defined outside the factory. Uh, so it is a challenge to understand all of them and, and how to um, provoke changes in them. Uh, then, well, in a huge factory which manufactures almost half a year, uh, half, a, sorry, half a million vehicles uh, every year, you have many different uh, field devices, many different technologies, and uh, they live together, uh, devices uh, from very uh, uh, soon 21st century and some not, not so, not so uh, young. So it is a challenge to interact with all of them. Then an, another circumstance, which is the PLC data, um, OT layer, contains usually volatile data. So it's not usual that all the data that is generated in every process in the factory is stored um, somewhere. So they just are designed to keep the process alive. So uh, it's a, a challenge how to relate this usually volatile data with other data and it's a challenge to store everything, etc. So uh, you can uh, think that you uh, arrive to the factory and you ask, ask for a data set and give me the data. And of course, it's not like that. It's very much more, more complex than that. And well, just a picture of this term that is usually uh, used now, uh, nowadays with the brownfield scenario. So brownfield scenario means that uh, you are interacting with a factory which is working, which cannot stop. And uh, the main purpose of the factory, of course, is manufacturing cars, is not um, the implementation of a data analytics system. So you have to adapt to real situations and uh, it's complex to implement something while they are producing. So the greenfield scenario would be the opposite, it would be, okay, let's, manu let's create a, a factory from scratch. And of course you have all the time and all the uh, space to design and implement whatever you like, but in, in the brownfield scenario, which is the most common by the way, uh, you cannot do that. Well, um, this data analytic system um, should do uh, different things. First, it should collect data from diverse data sources. They should, it should store this data. It should allow the technicians to visualize this data. It should allow some simple statistical control. And then it should allow more advanced analytics like 
prediction and crisis solving and everything to allow the technicians to take better decisions in real time. The long term vision of this system is having for each manufactured car uh, a large array of every variable that was involved in the manufacturing process, okay? thousands of variables. Uh, for gi giving just an example, uh, the car has thousands of welding. Uh, we, can, we could store for each of the welding the voltage of the welding machine during the assembly of a subcomponent, or we could store uh, the temperature of every cabin during the paint shop process. There are several of them. Um, and we could store, of course, any data regarding process, product, or environment. Okay, uh, we call this the car instance, uh, and this means that we could save every data, thousands of data, that we that we can correlate then with uh, other um, uh, quality control systems, or we could just visualize them. But the idea is to uh, relate all this data that uh, nowadays is not common in the automotive industry. So having this background, this idea, these objectives, this uh, long-term vision, uh, PSA and CTAG, we created a roadmap starting in the pay shop. Pay shop is a very interesting uh, part because um, it's uh, very automated um, and uh, we, it, it seemed a good place to start. And here we find, we find the product process and environment data. And usually process data are the most interesting, but at the same time are the most hard to uh, gather because they are usually volatile in the PLC layer. Just a very brief idea of, uh, about how a car is manufactured today. We have four big uh, steps. The first one is the stamping. We take these metal sheets, we use press shops, and we stamp uh, different um, uh, components. Then in the body in white, we weld, we weld usually this. Then the paint shop uh, in which we, we focus in this paper uh, adds incremental layers of, of material uh, to get the, the body in white painted. And finally, in the assembly line, we introduce different uh, components that are usually manufactured outside of the OEM by tier one or tier two uh, suppliers uh, until we have the complete car with all the personalization and, and so on. Um, as I see, as I say, uh, usually the OEM only manufactures the motor and the body in white. Meanwhile, the rest of the components are usually provided by a huge um, variety of, of uh, suppliers. It would be nice also to have a lot of data coming from these subcomponents, but it's very complex since the automotive ecosystem is uh, yeah, very complex indeed. So this is a very brief picture of the architecture. We have um, uh, OT um, uh, gathering data application. Uh, then we add all the data from the information systems of the group. And finally, this go outside of the networks of the factory and of the group to a cloud uh, in which we store and visualize every data. Well, there are lots of challenges while doing something like this. But uh, first, the lack of data, the, the lack of standardized data. Uh, there are many, many, many data in the factory, but it's not easy, it's not obvious how to relate this, this data to have this instance of a car. It's easy to monitor production variables, but it's not obvious how to relate these variables with a specific part. Uh, so, for example, we can have very easy the temperature of a cabin in every moment, but it's not easy how to relate the specific temperature that was in this uh, cabin where a specific car um, was uh, circulating under. Another, th another tip, another thing to consider is that usually in a, a lower, large manufacturing process, we have uh, input data, everything we have commented until now, but we have also output data. It is output data comes from uh, manual or automatic control systems, which provide uh, how well we are manufacturing. And it's very interesting uh, to do uh, quality correlations. Um, and we can have geometrical or aspect systems, but in any case, something is providing us uh, the output of everything uh, we are doing. And this is very interesting to do further analysis. So we use a couple of tools, one tool only for monitoring and SCADA, and the second uh, would be uh, a data analytics suite 
for suite for storage visualization and analysis. We have right now more than 5,000 variables monitored today, but uh, and, and the production is potentially uh, half a million uh, cars per year. But we are every day increasing uh, these variables number. Well, the methodology that we usually use in any of the parts of the factory, because the factory is huge, uh, but the, the methodology that we usually use is first we describe the problem, of course, then we try to identify where the data is, uh, we, we go to the sources, we structure it manually, and we experiment manually with this data. Then once we are sure that we want to use this information as it is, we monitor these variables to the data analytics suit. Then we start to create dashboards, as you can see in the right, to allow some basic statistical control and some visualization. And then we finally start to do some more advanced analysis, artificial intelligence analysis and the daily usage. As I can said, uh, as I have said, the paint shop is the focus in this, um, in this work. It receives a, a, a body in white and incremental layers of material are deposed in the structure. Then everything is cured and, 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 and dried. And what we see is uh, yeah, painted uh, both in white. It is very automated. And all every use case that we will see comes in this area. So basically, we have found some improvements and some uh, stories to share. One of them is, um, is this. Uh, we, uh, well, it, there is a very usual operation in the paint shop, which is uh, cleaning the cabin to um, eliminate dust when you paint and there is dust in the air, it potentially can provoke uh, defects on the surface. So it is very interesting to clean the cabin. And uh, we had um, a specific amount of times to clean the cabin for every shift. And we discovered with the system that uh, maybe we could avoid one of these operations. It was, uh, let's say, uh, simulated in the, in the data analytics suit. The hypothesis was that if we removed one operation, we could manufacture with the same uh, level of quality and it indeed we tested this in real life and it worked so we saved a lot of time to produce more units another typical case is uh, relations between temperature or quality so we discovered that in in one oven uh, if we increase the temperature uh, we could have less defects but of course this mean this means an, an energy cost increase of energy cost but at the same time we discovered that in a different cabin we could decrease the temperature without many differences in the defects so we we was uh, we were able to uh, uh, decrease the number of defects by keeping the energy spending uh, the same and this meant uh, yeah saving uh, reworking time while not uh, spending more uh, money in, in energy Another nice story is that we discovered that there was a correlation between the amount of cars in a cabin um, and the temperature of this cabin. So sometimes there is a bottleneck and some uh, a lot of cars um, get stuck in a, in a cabin and we discovered that suddenly the temperature started to decrease a lot and this affected the quality as well. This was a, an unknown effect of the presence of these cars and this, this means that right now we can avoid these things to happen and we can give an explanation to a, an unknown situation. Other minor uh, stories uh, mean the detection of deviation of parameters. For example, it, it helped to discover, for example, here, the detection of a leakage in a nanolite. Uh, we detected excessive temperature uh, as a hint of energy loss in a moment. This should be switched off, but we discovered that it wasn't. And also a blocked filter, which uh, was causing a quality incidence, and we detected very quickly in less time than usual uh, where the problem was. So, of course, it's very important of measuring the return of investment. This is about money every, every day. So this is very important to convince the hierarchy that this is saving money. Um, it changed a lot daily routines. What took hours in the past now takes only minutes because it's very easy to interact with the platform. And of course, uh, a new data analytics uh, culture, which is uh, providing more and more benefits. As learned lessons, uh, well, the factories usually uh, are very optimized. So this is just one more step, but they manufacture very well. Uh, the process experts are key to integrate this. Um, yeah, we have to work inside the factory and integrate uh, this with the experts because otherwise this is not about consuming only a data set. This requires much more interaction.
another one that we need a lot of time to structure the data. Uh, we spend a lot of time to prepare the data before any analysis. And we need these short-term victories to, to present the, hi the hierarchy because otherwise uh, this means, as I say, money all the time. So as a conclusion, we are presenting the application of a data analytics solution in an automotive factory. Um, we hope that this is an inspiration to others to do something like that. Uh, we have uh, experimented a deep cultural change, which we think is very positive. Uh, and this is one of the uh, first one of many steps that will come in the future. Thank you very much.